guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're gonna to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. A lot of news to discuss. Firstly, a bunch of players have offered themselves to Barcelona as a free agent in the summer or even in the winter. The list is absolutely huge. Cavani, Werner, Abamian, Dybala, Kessi, Rudiger, Tellez, the list goes on. We're gonna discuss those players. And also in the full back position, the club wanna make movements this summer. Firstly, Valencia are very, very interested in Mingueta on loan, and the club wanna bring in a left back on loan as well. They have some names on the table, Jose Gaia, Tagrifico, Alex Tellez, Guerrero from Dortmund, Teo Hernandez, and they're also looking at Mazawari in that right back position. So expect some movements in the full back position during this window. But the club right now wanna renew Ronald Arujo and Pablo Gabe on a new contract. Both players are attracting so much interest from other clubs, and the club wanna tie down both the players on a brand new contract as soon as possible. And lastly, the club are looking at bringing in a new number nine this summer, with Erling Holland being, the, of course, the number one priority, and Dusan Vlahovic and Alexander Isaac as the backup options. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes on this video. It'll be very much appreciated. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. The first players that we would link with is a whole bunch of free agents coming up. And it's coming in from Fernando Polo from Deportivo. He's come out saying that players from different catches have been offered to Barcelona, both in this winter market and the summer transfer market. Those players are Dybala, Cavani, Morata, Werner, Aubameyang, Vlahovic, Mazuari, Rudiger, Kessi, Schick, and Tellez are all on that long list. So apparently these players, not doing too well at their club or free agents, want more game time. They have offered themselves to Barcelona, be them themselves or from their agents. Now, this is total crap. Of course, you can say this for anything. I can tell you right now that, oh, I don't know, who's someone off the top of my head. Kinsley Coleman offered himself to Barcelona. There's no facts around it. There's no evidence. Just saying, they're just taking use of people's situation. Of course, Cavani will be free. Dybala will be free. Morata does not want to continue Atletico Madrid. Ward is not doing too well at Chelsea. He's a bench player. Aubameyang, bench player Arsenal. Vlahovic will, of course, be available. Marsuari, free agent. Rudiger, free agent. Kessie, free agent. Schick, of course, upcoming Nino striker Bayern Leverkusen. Alex Tellez, not getting game time. I wouldn't say these players often tell to Barcelona, but I would say they are available on the market and Barcelona are keeping eyes on these players. We'll wait and see what happens, but this is not really news, just more so players are available and Barcelona are keeping a close eye on them. But a player that Barcelona are keeping tabs on because he is the number one priority in the summer for the striker position, it's Erling Haaland. Now, of course, he should be making his decision right now over the next 24 hours whether or not he believes Bruce at Dortmund or not. The deadline is today, Friday, as I'm uploading this video, so we should be hearing the rumors coming out very, very soon. But again, Pedro Bravo, a super agent and Mino Royola's friend, came out saying more about Erling Haaland on Entry Gito TV. He came out saying that if Kylian Mbappe goes to Real Madrid, I see Haaland more at Barcelona than Real Madrid. Kylian Mbappe would have already renewed his contract with PSG if he wanted to. Of course, Kylian Mbappe right now is in talks with PSG to renew his contract for a very short term for around two years. I don't know if that will happen or not, but all I want to say on Erling Haaland is this. If Barcelona qualify for the Champions League and have the money, I think we will be the favorites. The question is, will we have the money or will we be in the Champions League, of course, finish top four or win the Europa League for the remainder of the season? We'll wait and see, but again, Erling Haaland is the number one priority for Barcelona. Now, with Erling Haaland being the priority for next summer, who is going to be the backup? Because, of course, there's a good chance that signing fails. We don't have the money. We don't call for the Champions League. Or Real Madrid, Man United, PSG just offer way more money than us. Who is the backup for Erling Haaland? Well, Sport came out saying that Barcelona would target Dusan Vlahovic and also Alexander Isaac this summer if they fail in their attempts to sign Erling Haaland. So, right now, Vlahovic and Isaac are the two backup options, of course, for Erling Haaland. But Vlahovic is being rumored all over the place other clubs because for other clubs he's the number one priority like Juventus, Arsenal. I think Isaac is more realistic of course right now Real Sociedad, Swedish probably available for around 40 to 50 million euros I would say. We've been linked to him for years upon years. He's kind of like the Erling Haaland. They both have that Erling Haaland profile. Big, strong, good pace and of course great finishing in the box. We'll wait and see. Again, on Vlahovic, I don't see it too clear. A lot of clubs are interested in him. But Alexander Isaac could be that option, of course, in La Liga with the La Liga experience. He could be possible. We'll have to wait and see. But right now, of course, like I've already said, Erling Haaland is number one. And these two players are the second option. Now, along with a striker, the club are also really focused on reinforcing the defense as well. 
Firstly, at center back, we have been linked with a free agent this summer in Andreas Christensen. And Mundo Portivo came out saying that Barcelona are indeed interested in Christensen, but his signing will be difficult due to the economic demands. His father asked for a large commission to renew with Chelsea that is also to be due in a single payment. And Barcelona are aware of this claim. So apparently, his father, who is of course his agent as well, representing Christensen, he's asking for a high demand commission and also to be paid immediately, not installments, not here and there, to be paid right up front, which of course, with our situation right now financially, that's gonna be very difficult to, you know, obtain and to achieve. But wait and see on Christensen, I've always said this and I'll say it again, I feel like Barcelona wanna bring in Aspilicueta more if he's free agent, but of course, Christensen is a better player right now. He's younger, of course, but Aspilicueta is more versatile, Spanish. It's, you know, both have their advantages and disadvantages, so we'll wait and see. But again, his pride right now is to renew with Chelsea. If he doesn't, then Barcelona will certainly be in the race for his signing as a free agent. Now, along with Christensen, we're also looking at other center backs as well. More specifically, left for the center backs to replace Omtiti and also long left. Mundo Portivo came out saying that Barcelona are keeping tabs on lists of left for the center backs. Amongst them right now are Lissandra Martinez, Romagnoli, and also Sensei from Fire Nord. We've been linked with these players so many times over the past year and a half or so. I feel like I've already talked about them, but again, I'll say it one more time. Martinez for me is the favorite. I absolutely love the player. Red Magnoli is not too bad. He's gonna be a free agent this summer, I believe as well. Sensei, he's just a typical average player to be honest. I don't think he would be an upgrade or a downgrade on Langlet or Umtiti. But again, we'll have the wait and see. Offers are gonna have to come in and then yada, yada, yada. It depends on how much money we have after, you know, our big signs like Erling Haaland and, you know, other players as well. We'll wait and see. It's not a priority, but again, we are keeping tabs on left foot to center backs. Now, along with center backs, the club are also looking at full backs as well. And I tell you what, we've been linked with so many full backs over the past 24 hours. It's absolutely ridiculous. Firstly, at right back, not too much interest only on Mazzuari coming in Fernando Polo from Deportivo. He's come out saying that Min Rayola has put Mazzuari's name on Barcelona's table. He is a firm option for the club next summer when his contract expires with Ajax. Now, of course, Mazzuari, he'd be coming in as, you know, a favor for Rayola to bring in Erling Holland, but also would be a great asset as well. I think his entrance more so depends on the exit of Sergio Dest, because of course, only want to have two right backs will it be Mazzuari, Danny Alves, Danny Alves, Dest, Dest, Mazzuari. Have the wait and see. We are being linked with Mazzuari. I think this will be a real possibility in the summer, especially if we do sell Des. Now, secondly, on left backs, we've been linked with a lot of left backs. Of course, right now, Barcelona are looking to bring in a left back on loan. One of those names is Tagile Fico coming in from TYC Sports. Of course, very, very good source in Argentina. They come out saying that Ajax would ask for a transfer fee for 7 million euros for Tagli Fico in this transfer window. Barcelona want to sign a left back and are attentive to the Argentine situation. Marseille and Napoli are also following him. And in this report as well, they also talk about Alessandro Martinez coming to Barcelona as well. I think Tagli Fico would be a good option. Again, he's cheap. I wouldn't mind it. But again, paying it right now is a big risk. I'd rather take him on loan with that buy option. Maybe increase the buy option to 10 million euros. See how he does. If he plays well, we can sign him. If not, we can ship him off. Now, along with Tagli Fico, we've also been linked with Teo Hernandez and of course, Jose Gaia. Gerard Lamiro came out saying that at the club, they like Teo Hernandez a lot. And Mateo Ademon is a big fan of Jose Gaia. And Barcelona, we're also taking a look at Tagli Fico on loan, but Napoli right now are offering much more money than Barcelona. Again, I think a left back option coming in right now is a good possibility. In the summer, we're gonna have to reinforce that position 100%. Jordi Alba's getting old. Alejandro Balde is too young. Minguet is not really a fullback. The club have to bring in a good competition for Jordi Alba and also someone who can't overtake him in the future when he retires or drops off in form. By the way, and see again, my dream, my option is gonna be Jose Gaia 100%. I like Teo Hernandez, former Madrid player, so I wouldn't be really looking at that too much. Tagifico would be a good option if we do fail on how Jose Gaia, in my opinion. But for me, Gaia is the dream, but of course that'll have to happen in the summer. The club are looking to bring someone in right now. We'll wait and see, but again, the club are really interested in bringing in a left back this window. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. And staying on the full back topic, we're gonna talk about Oscar Mingueta. Apparently, Valencia are interested in a loan for the rest of the season for Oscar. Firstly, the news broke from Fernando Polo from Deportivo. He came out saying that Valencia are interested in signing Oscar Mingueta on loan as a replacement for Daniel Vaz, who will leave the club very, very soon. The player appreciates the proposal as he's not playing much recently, but how However, Barcelona have some absentees in defense. They will have to make a decision. So again, letting go of that will leave us you know, vulnerable in the fullback position. We only have Jordi Alba, Danny Alves, and Des. And of course, Des 
Travis does not really like him. Alejandro Balde is too young, but these reports are getting more and more strong. Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Barcelona and Valencia are in talks for a loan for Austin Mingueta until the end of the season, with the initial idea being that there will not be a buy option in there. So pretty much, we're giving Mingueta to a rival team for him to play more and strengthen their squad as well. Is that a bit of a risk? Who knows? Halina from Cope came out saying that Austin Mingueta is currently negotiating a loan move to Valencia. His entourage confirms that the talks have already been underway as well. Jordan Romero came out saying that Barcelona and Valencia are negotiating conditions for Austin Mingueta's loan until June. The operation is in progression, but again, details are yet to be finalized. Very, very early stages. And lastly, can the theater came out saying that first contest held between Austin Mingueta and Valencia for his loan move are underway. The player is attracted by the proposal and believes he will have more minutes this season. Now, here's where I stand on Oscar. I think he should go out on loan. He's not playing right now. He's only he's only getting options in the fullback position. For me, I see Mingueta as a center back. If he can, but then if he's going to Valencia, Daniel Vaz, who of course is a fullback, he's going to be going there playing the fullback position. So I would only do it if we bring someone in alone, if we get that left back that we want alone, whether it's, you know, Taglifico, whoever it may be, Guerrero, Tellez, whoever it is, if we get that player alone, I let Oscar leave. If we don't, I'd be telling, I'd, I'd probably look into keeping him because again, you're going to send him to another team, you're going to strengthen another La Liga rival, and, you know, they're not going to buy him. If they want to buy him, sure. I think right now I value Mingueta at. 20 25 million euros if they want to do a loan with that buy option in there i would highly consider it but again for me it depends on if someone comes in someone comes in i let oscar go if not i would keep him so we'll wait and see what happens but valencia do want Oscar mingueta on loan and mingueta himself is interested now right now on paper alejandro balde is the backup option for jordi alba right now as the natural left back and he's also been rumored to lead the club as well sport of kamal saying the sporting staff like alejandro balde a lot but feel he's not quite ready for the constant top level football you go go out on loan for the rest of the season some Premier League clubs are created to sign him in any case Barcelona want to sign a temporary patch at left back on loan so again if we get that left back in on loan we could look at you know loaning out Alejandro Balde Premier League La Liga wherever it may be but the club do trust him for the future but again right now he's not ready to be at the starting level in the first team now a player who's been rumored to leave Barcelona since the day he's arrived was of course Luke de Jong but now things have slowed down with his recent good form at the club Mateo Morita from Sky Sports came out saying that Luke de Jong will 100% not sign for Cadiz during this transfer window and it looks like he's going to be staying at the club for the rest of the season for me, Luke, he's of course done well, three games, three goals, but I think if a good proposal comes in, he will consider it. Let's be real, he won't be the Barcelona, you know, in the future. Even right now, once all the people, all the players come back from injury, Ansu, Ferran, Abdi, Jogla, Memphis, the whole shebang, Braithwaite as well, he won't get that game time. So I think he will consider that if a good offer comes in. But as of right now, Luke de Jong is set to stay at Barcelona for the rest of the season, of course, until his loan expires. But a player who's been asking Barcelona to leave for probably, I'd say, the past year, has been Neto and Sport have come out saying that Neto has again asked Barcelona to leave and has also received some offers in recent weeks but Barcelona don't want to lose Ter Stegen's backup right now. Neto stays until the end of the season. That's what they're saying right now from Barcelona. So again, the club want to have that backup offer for Ter Stegen. They don't really trust Anaki Pena, Arnaud Tenez. And again, if a good offer comes in, they want to replace Neto ASAP as soon as possible. And Dimitrieski, most likely the Rayo Vallecano goalkeeper. But as of right now, Neto will stay until the end of the season because the club really want to have that strong backup option for Mark andre Ter Stegen, which does mean the future of Anaki Pena right now is in the year. Sport also came out saying that Barcelona are studying what to do with Anaki Pena now that Neto is expected to stay for the rest of the season. As a young goalkeeper, he must play regularly and leave for a team where he'd be a starter is ideal. We've been hearing about Naki Pena going out alone for years now. I think it's time. Go out to a team, Segunda B, maybe La Liga as well, where you'll be 100% the starting goalkeeper. I don't want him to go to a club where he'll be the bench. No point. Might as well just sit on the bench at Barcelona and stay here and learn from, you know, Ter Stegen, Neto, and the goalkeeper coach. Has to go somewhere where he can play. And if we do find that perfect club, I think Naki Pena will go out on loan. But until then, he's probably going to stay at Barcelona B for the rest of the season as well. But there are players in the squad that Barcelona want to send out on loan or sell but those players are insisting on staying and those two players are Ricky Puch and Serginio Des. Having Miguel from AES came out saying that Ricky Puch and Des are far from the players that would 
least problems under Chavi. Without counting on the players who have been out for a long time, it does not seem that their situation is going to change in the short term or the medium term. So it looks like if Ricky Poch and Death stay this season for the remainder of the season, of course, they will not be playing that many minutes. Right now, more beneficial for them to go out alone or maybe even be sold. And also, Death's agent came out speaking in the media as well. He came out saying that Sergio Dest is happy at Barcelona. It's a great club and an exit is unlikely at the moment. So what do you do with these two players? For me, I keep hold of them till the end of the season. That's what you have to do. Injuries can come up. Of course, they're going to be having a lot of games. Copa, Europa, La Liga. The best thing to do right now for me is to keep them trained. Maybe they can press Xavi. They maybe he just throws them in, gives them a chance. I think the best thing for right now is to keep them. I think, again, if an offer comes in for either of them for like 30 million plus, couple obviously consider it and probably will sell them but until then i think they will stick it out for the rest of the season but then again the question is will chavi trust them and play them we'll have to wait and see let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at barcelona firstly the priority the contract renewal of around the arujo firstly coming in from as they have come out saying that Barcelona's priority is to renew Arujo as soon as possible, but they know the negotiations will not be easy because the Uruguayan is a sought-after player. Knowing that Aleman has had a great effort to retain Ansu Fati and Pedri, Arujo wants to be valued just as they were as well. Mundo Deportivo came out with an extensive article saying that Barcelona has scheduled a meeting with Ronald Arujo's agent in the coming days to advance his contract renewal. The idea is to send his contract for the next five years until June 2028, and the economic conditions are yet to be negotiated. Barcelona consider Arujo's continuation key going into the future. The economic aspect is important. Arujo's salary is the lowest in the first team right now. The initial idea of extending for a five season can also vary as well. Arujo's entourage ensure that his intention is to stay at Barcelona, but he needs to be recognized for his role in the team. The player is grateful to the club and he feels like another coulet, but he has to be valued in his contract renewal. Real Madrid is not an option, of course, even if he goes for free, yada, yada, yada. Something that would be very strange if it happened, as the priority for both parties is to reach an agreement. We cannot mess this up. Arujo is going to be the future of our center back. He's going to be, it's, it's Arujo and someone else, whether it's Eric Garcia, Dalit, Longlet, Omtiti, I don't know, but it's Arujo plus another. We have to get this right. If we offer a bad contract from the get go, I think it can go absolutely collapse. It can go way, way wrong. We have to give him a strong offer as that first one. And of course, we're going to sit down and negotiate with him over the next few days. Mateo Morita from Sky Sports also came out saying that Barcelona plan to present an official contract offer to Ronald Arujo in the coming days to extend his contract. The player wants to stay. All you have to do is just offer him the right contract. This could be done in two days tops. But if the club drag it, mess it up, and if Arujo, for example, you know, does a Dembele, ask for a bunch of money that he's, you know, a little bit too much it could go badly but the club just do what they did with Ansu Fati and Ped 3 offered the a contract that's you know absolutely perfect for him he'll sign it bada bing bada boom will be done we'll have to wait and see what happens but again the priority for renewals right now is Arujo the next contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of Usman Dembele now I don't want to go too much in depth because this situation can change in any given moment we're nearing the finish line right now but right now, anything can change in any matter of time. So I don't want to go too much in depth. But of course, yesterday in the match, not part of the squad list. He was left at home. And after the squad list came out, Mateo Eleman did an interview with Barca TV. He came out saying, we understand that Usman Dembele's decision is not to continue at Barcelona. And our decision has been communicated to him. We want committed players at the club. And we told him that he has to leave the club as soon as possible. The reality is that Usman Dembele would begun negotiations with his agents five months ago. During this time, there had been continuous communication in which the club's position has been to continue with him. Different offers have been made. We have been on top of this issue for a long time. We've done enough for the player to consider what he has done for the future. So... And Iman saying, look, we've done everything. It's time for him to go now. We're done. You can go now. That situation right now with Barcelona. But if you look at Usman Dembele's side, it's a bit more different. Now, firstly, Candacera came out saying that Usman Dembele's camp insists they don't want to work with threats and pressure. The player wants to continue negotiating and renew his contract. So again, from the Dembele's side, we're still hearing the same thing. Rakwan came out saying that Barcelona are very angry with Usman Dembele's situation. They don't contemplate termination his contract and want a transfer during this window. The renewal is no longer an option. His time at the club is over. But then you have ESPN, Moses Lawrence come out saying that Usman Dembele's desire is to still stay at Barcelona. His entourage insists on it and they hope to have one more last talk with the club. They put personal and economic conditions, but the player's wish is still to stay at Barcelona. Now, this is like we're like reaching the end right now the finish line is almost there it's like 99% done that 1% is that you know Usman Dembele still wants to stay he wants to talk to the club one more time it could switch but 
I think the club right now are fed up. The only way I can see Dembele renewing his contract at this point is if he goes back to, you know, Barcelona's offer, say, you know what, that offer that you offered me from before, I'll take that right now. None of this crap about 700k a week, 40 million in commission, that won't happen. 100% won't happen. The only way he can renew at this point, in my opinion, is if he goes back to one of Barcelona's offers and accept it. Otherwise, it's done. Right now, it's looking very, very done. But again, situation can change at any given moment. But it looks like Usman Dembele's time at Barcelona is coming to an end. And the final contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of Pablo Gave. And finally, 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 it looks like it's going to get done. Now, as you can see on the right hand side, that black and white picture of Gavi with the two hearts, he posted this on his Instagram yesterday. 20 minutes later, Helena from Cope came out saying that Gavi's contract renewal is about to be completed. Negotiations are very advanced. New contract until June 2026 first team player and a release clause of 1 billion euros. The agreement can be finalized at any given moment. By the time I upload this video, it could be done deal as well. Fabrizio Romano came out saying that Gabby's new contract with Barcelona until June 2026 with a huge release clause is ready since long time ago. It's just a matter of time, new meeting, and then it'll be completed, signed, and announced. Gabby only wants to stay at Barcelona. Absolutely fantastic news. This should have been done a few months ago. I don't know why it took this long. We're waiting for the you know, fix up the wage bill and today's you know, renewal. Coutinho's exit, Demir's exit, yada yada yada. But looks like now it will be completed very very soon. And also some big news that we got yesterday before the match is that Nico Gonzalez has been officially registered for the first team. Incredible, incredible achievement for Nico. Fully deserved. And now of course he is no longer a Barcelona B player. And we also saw yesterday that he wore the number 14 jersey. Of course Coutinho's former number. Gerard Demir became out before the match saying that Nico will wear the number 14. And also that Pablo Gave will wear the number 11 after he'll be registered in the first team in the next few days. So Gavi will get number 11, of course, Demir and Dembele's form of number, and Nico gets now Coutinho's number, number 14. I feel like in the summer they will switch around the numbers, but this is just what's available right now. Of course, 11 is more so for a forward, 14 is more for a midfielder. I think Nico might keep 14, but I think Gavi might change to maybe number 6, 7, 8, whatever it may be. I think if Piazza leaves, he could take number 8 100%. We'll wait and see, but of course, Gaz Renewal almost done. He will be promoted to the first team, and Nico has already been promoted to the first team. And the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys one injury update around the first team at Barcelona, and that is for Samuel Omtiti. The club released an official statement saying that Samuel Omtiti has been successfully operated on his fractured on his fifth metatostrone in his right foot, and they actually give a timeline. The approximate time off will be around three months. I like it when Barcelona do that. Hopefully, they do that more often, give us an actual timeline now based on the media. So the club confirmed he'll be out for around three months of course with the contract renewal it's not a big blow in terms of money but again for his aspirations for the future it is so but again big sam will be out for around three months so that was my reaction to the barcelona news over the past 24 hours hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed the main thing i want to know firstly if we don't get erling holland who would be your preferred backup option blahovic or isaac secondly on that left back coming in well firstly would let me get go out on loan to Valencia. Secondly, if he does go out on loan, who would you bring in as that left back on loan right now? And of course, on those players who offer themselves to Barcelona, like Cavani, Werner, Abamian, Dybala, yada, yada, yada. Would there be any that you would actually consider to come to Barcelona this summer or this winter and why? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. <laughs>